In this video, I'm going to show you how to build this barn door. Let's get to it. First things first, we're going to mill up the lumber, and that starts with rough cutting it to size. Rough cutting it simply makes the milling process much easier by handling smaller boards. After we've rough cut it, we head over to the jointer. The jointer is going to get us a flat and straight surface on both the face and the perpendicular edge of each board. After the jointer, I take it over the table saw and we're going to rip it down to final widths. Making sure to use the edge that we put on the jointer on the fence of the table saw so that way we have a nice and straight and parallel board. The final step of the milling process is going through the planer. If you're new to planers, the planer's job is simple. It makes each board the same thickness. The jointer is to flatten and straighten and the planer makes everything on the same plane, hence its name. Now that the milling's all done, it's time to cut the rails to length, taking into account I'm doing a tongue and groove system, so I need to account for the lengths of the tongues themselves. Cut the tongues out on my rails, I'm going to change out my regular table saw blade for a dado stack. A dado stack is just a really, really thick combination of blades. And with a special blade comes a special plate insert. But before I cut the tongues in the rails, I'm first going to cut the dados in the styles of the door. There are two purposes for this dado. One is where the interior panel of the door is going to sit, but two, that's going to be the size of my tongue for my rails. Ideally, this dado is going to sit dead center or one third of the thickness of the rails and styles. These dados give me an exact reference of where to cut my tongues on my rails. It's always a good idea to do test runs on test pieces before you do tongues and grooves just to make sure you have the right settings on your table saw. And then you get a nice perfect fit. You might see a little gap there, but that's going to allow for the glue to set in there and expand and make that a really nice tight joint. Test fitting is always a good idea. Primarily, you want to make sure you got all your dimensions right. Now's the time to figure that out. Now it's time to break down the interior panel for this door, which is made from plywood. This door is being made from knotty alder lumber, so I was able to get a knotty alder plywood as well to match. After finalizing the dimensions on the table saw, again, test fitting it before I glue it up to make sure all the dimensions are correct. And it looks like we're good. The center panel for this door is going to have a faux slatted panel look. I'm going to achieve that by cutting out tiny little grooves on the table saw. To ensure accurate spacing when calculating where to cut the grooves, be sure to account for how far the panel insets into the dados on either style. To cut the grooves, simply raise your blade only about an eighth of an inch. Run the board through, flip it over, do it on the other side, reset the fence, and do it again. Here's a look at what the panel looks like afterwards. It achieves a nice slatted look. Now before glue up, we're going to do another test fit. This test fit is to kind of get my process of the glue up in place. Knowing my spacing, knowing my sequence, all that kind of stuff to get it ready for a nice smooth glue up. After that final test fit, it's time for the real thing. And I promise you, they never go according to plan. Honestly, it's probably just the finality of it all that makes me freak out a little bit in this process, but honestly, it's okay. They went together pretty easily. After it's out of the clamps, I'm using Naughty Alder, so I'm going to fill all of those knots with a tinted epoxy. You can tint with stain or a dye. This next step is probably totally optional, but I think it just makes the door look more professional. I'm going to route out a slot to insert the back side of the handle for the door. A quick scrap wood jig makes it really easy to route this out quickly and make sure it's nice and straight and fits that handle perfectly like a glove. Now to our favorite part of the process, sanding. Make sure you go through the grits and end with at least 180, I like 220. Now you may have noticed when I glued it up, I didn't have the styles cut to final length. That was very much so on purpose because then I can trim the door to the final length and make them exactly even with the rails. This part of the process is so much easier with the track saw, but you can do it with the circular saw on a straight edge. Now that our door is finally to its final dimensions, we're going to knock down those super sharp corners. I prefer a round over. Last but not least, it's time to drill some holes for the hardware. Little tip, if you start with the drill in reverse, you can avoid tear out on the top. Now it's finally time to stain. For softer woods like alder, I like to use a pre-stained wood conditioner. This helps avoid blotching and makes the wood accept those stain more evenly. After you let the conditioner sit for about 10, 15, 20 minutes, wipe off the excess and you're ready to stain. When staining large surface areas like this, I prefer not to use a rag, but instead use a staining pad or even lamb's wool. It holds a ton of stain and you can get a lot more surface area covered in a shorter amount of time. I think it's a good idea to wipe off the excess stain immediately after you're done. After you let the stain sit for at least a couple hours, I prefer overnight, you're ready to put a clear coat on. I do a minimum of two coats, sometimes three coats, making sure to sand with 220 grit in between each coat after it dries. 
This small sanding process in between coats will ensure a really smooth and professional looking finish. So I kind of screwed up and forgot to drill the holes for the bolts on this handle. I'm going to have to unfortunately do that after I'm done finishing. I'm using a piece of scrap wood underneath to help avoid blowout and therefore keep the nice pristine finish that I just finished spraying. Guess what? That door is built and now it's time to install it. I put a backer with all my rails because you never know if the spacing of those pre-built rails actually match up with your stud spacing. As long as those rails are drilled directly into the studs, that thing is going to be super strong and not going anywhere. Another helpful tip, pre-drill the holes where the bolts that support the rail go. That'll make the installation process so much faster and so much easier. This is always a fun moment seeing the door fit exactly how it's supposed to. This floor guide prevents the door from swinging out. Last but not least is installing a latch. And this is just for privacy purposes given this is going into a bathroom. There's a lot of different styles. This is a new one that I found and I really like it. And just like that, the barn door build is finished. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you guys on the next build.